Never been more excited to do anything in my whole life. Okay. <laughs> and first, that's the way they say to do it. Oh, the head's coming off. Pressure bug head. <laughs> it's so crunchy. <laughs> It's nutty, very chewy. Yeah, got that exoskeleton. Bottoms up, literally. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> hey, smart people, Joe here. Bugs. When I say that word, what comes to mind? Probably not restaurants or your next home cooked meal. When most people think about bugs and food, they think about, I don't know, health code violations? certainly not eating them. But there are some people out there trying to change that for some really good reasons. I recently flew to Long Beach to attend a big bug banquet where a bunch of talented chefs are turning insects into fine dining. I have heard that insects are the food of the future, but I wanted to know why and maybe try some, which is why I am at a feast where every dish on the menu features edible insects. And since it's a holiday feast, I invited a couple of my friends. I've got Kyle Hill from the YouTube channel Because Science. Hey Joe, thanks for having me. You excited to eat some bugs? Oh, uh. Okay. And she literally wrote the book about edible insects and human evolution. Julie Lesnick, anthropologist from Wayne State. Hello. Bring on the first dish. Ooh, okay, what's in this? Okay, so you got a corn flour tostada that's made with about 20% grasshopper flour. A little bit of a uh, black ant as kind of like a citrus salt component. So that's gonna add a zing. Where does this, where, why do these ants have this like zingy citrus flavor? It's a, it's a chemical defense mechanism. So they actually have formic acid and they'll like spit the formic acid and it like Fantastic. throws off their, their enemies. <laughs> it didn't work too well for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try it. Let's do it. And I see what you did with the shrimp. They're arthropods, just like insects. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's real good. I love this. I'm getting some of that zing now. Right. Yeah. The, the formic acid is different from citrus. It's a little pop. None of this is screaming insect to me. It's all used really well, mm -hmm. really smartly. It definitely has, you know, one of the strongest flavors in all the bugs we're gonna try. Mm -hmm. For being so small and being so potent. Yeah. Well done, ants and chef. Ali, you have a kitchen full of bugs. How did you get into having bugs in the kitchen, eating bugs, getting other people to eat bugs? I was in Mexico for a public health project and I had a taco with chapulines or grasshoppers and that was delicious. I started blogging, met bug people, fell in love and took off from there. Is there like a scientific reason that people don't eat bugs? People all over the world do eat bugs. Like I think from our viewpoint, we think eating bugs is weird, but like we're actually the odd ones. So is there something that lets you predict whether or not some part of the world will or won't have bugs as part of their diet? The number one predictor is latitude, how close you are to the equator. So part of the reason why we don't like seeing bugs in our kitchen is that we uh, seal off our homes. But when you live in the tropics, you have a very different relationship with bugs. What you see is that people have, you know, the bugs that they know are harmful, the ones that are helpful, and the ones that are delicious. It is a natural food source that gives you so many nutrients, it's almost silly to ignore it. People have these innate reactions when they see creepy crawly things. Is that any influence on whether people will choose to eat this stuff? So the the disgust reaction, like the churning stomach, the, the, the gag reflex, like it's real, it's a real emotion, but the emotion is learned. So this is not a like an innate biological fear of bugs. Yeah, it's like a neophobia. But we've changed that. One crunchy bite at a time. Actually surprisingly delicious. What delicious dishes do you have for us? I have sauteed green beans with garlic and mealworms. And then on the platter here, I have mini pecan tarts with crickets. I can see the crickets. It's gonna be in my body soon. Trying it's not a meal without right a mealworm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing. Huh. If you, if you didn't tell me that bugs were in it, I wouldn't have known. Well, I guess it's a compliment? It is amazing. So good. This one looks really good. He said this one was mine. <laughs> that one is a, there's a lot of visible crickets I know. happening on this one. <laughs> okay, going in. Are you sure there's crickets in here? <laughs> yeah, the other flavors work really well. The sweetness kind of mixes with the nuttiness. They blend so well with the other flavors. It's really jumping into my mouth here. I wanted more axe of that thorax. <laughs> I give that a two out of 10, but Come I on. give this another 10 out of 10. 
How many people uh, on, on Earth, around the world, like regularly consume bugs? I think the estimate is that at least a billion people are eating bugs, like today, right now. Is that changing? We have such a negative attitude about eating bugs, and so it's actually permeating in globalized society. So people who rely on eating bugs as a, as a very important part of their nutrition, if they start looking at what we do, and then they feel stigmatized if they eat those bugs, our negative reactions are harming them. That's the thing that makes me the most sad, is I do this on Instagram and different platforms, and I get asked, oh, how many times have you dropped on your head? And I'm like, this is like presented in a nice way, and we're working on educating folks, but I do see that same phenomenon. It's amazing how our opinions about what progress is, it starts painting bugs as savage and primitive, and that goes all the way back to a colonial history. So Columbus, when he encountered people, they were eating bugs. These people were painted as primitive and savage and animal-like, and so then the entire European continent's like, well, I don't want to be thought of as primitive or savage. And so then eating bugs was just, Taboo. was disgusting, taboo. If we here can get on board with eating bugs, then kind of the world can go back to their natural resources. Ooh. So this is like loaded potato. There is a grasshopper butter, which I cooked the potatoes in. Also with furikake and spiced grasshopper. Here, this one's for you. Thank you. I kind of just want to pop the whole thing in my mouth at once. Well, that's what I'm doing. Okay. I mean, the bug is perfectly executed. I can have a little crunch from the worm on top. It's not jumping out and going, I'm a worm potato. I like grasshopper butter, which I didn't know I would say. Yeah. How do you milk them? <laughs> well, anything with it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bug eating doesn't quite have the right ring. Uh, is there like a technical term for this? Entomophagy. I got an exoskeleton in my teeth. Bring on the next course. Ooh. There's a lot going on. There's here. a lot going on. We have several dishes to choose from. The first one is mashed garlic uh, cauliflower with um, mealworms. And what's in the cookies? <laughs> they are crickets. We call those chocolate chirp cookies. Chocolate chirp cookies. Oh, it's so good! Like Try the mashed potato first. Mm -hmm. Textural mm. mix is wonderful. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very good. The nuttiness of the mealworm adds really nicely to the cauliflower. You know, mm -hmm. everything else is very kind of smushy, and then you add that, you get the crunch. Just like with the other ants, I'm just getting like a little bit of like citrus pop. Which is perfect with the avocado. It is just providing that texture, that additional flavor, like any like any other ingredient. And you can start to retrain your brain kind of to associate this not as something that's disgusting, not nothing like that, but something that's food, food. Well, it's funny because when we talk about edible insects, people think of it like eating it raw off the ground or something. And that's not how people around the world eat it. Like, it's yeah. an ingredient. You wanna try the cookie? Well, that's just a delicious cookie. That's really good. That's chirping delicious. That's amazing. 10 out of 10. You notice that this just needs is a little bit of cold cricket milk. You can't milk a cricket, Joe. Stop trying. Cockroach milk is a thing, though. No. Wait a second. So we have established that bugs are delicious, but are they nutritious? Yeah, they're basically little vitamins, and they contain a bunch of macro and micronutrients that you wouldn't get from just eating like the rib of a cow. You're eating the whole thing of the bug, and you're getting all those healthy fats, so where you would eat avocados or almonds or salmon, you could eat a mopani worm and get those really good healthy fats. That is the most millennial food in the world, mopani worm toast, can you imagine? <laughs> and everything's very bioavailable too. So that means your stomach can absorb it more. So these sound in a lot of ways like nature's perfect multivitamin, and they even come in pill form. One thing with the bugs though, depending on which bug you eat, you get a different nutrient profile. With chimpanzees, who are closest to a living relative, they you know, have fashioned these tools to extract termites from the mound, and the termites they're getting are the soldiers, and they're really protein rich. And if, are they doing that on purpose? Yeah, so chimpanzees are frugivores. Most of their diet comes from fruit. And so for a large body chimp, they have to supplement some protein in their diet. It's so, that's amazing that they're, they're using this like an actual literal vitamin shop out there in nature. So when we go kind of down the branches of human evolution to about two million years ago, we're working with the genus Australopithecus, and we actually have evidence that they were also eating termites. The Australopithecines we're likely doing with these bone tools is digging into the termite mound to access fatty rich termites instead of the protein rich like termites. Larva larva, like larvae. Yes. I call it a pad of butter. Like <laughs> it is just straight butter. up fat. Mm. Okay, so why would they be after fat? Australopithecine brains are about 20% bigger than chimpanzees, and our brains run on fat. Like, all the fatty acids are so important for developing our brains and for keeping them functioning properly. So I can go and find basically any restaurant in America and I'm gonna find plenty of fat in my diet. But if you're walking around Africa and you're an older human, you just don't have these sources of fat. 
Right. So this would have been a key nutrient that they can't get anywhere else? Yeah. So one, you know, when we think about humans and, and what makes us so unique is how large our brains are. And so over the millions of years of evolution since our last common ancestor, our brains have been getting gradually bigger and bigger. And so one thing we know that must mean is that they must have been getting fat in their diet. But when you hunt animals on the landscape, they're very lean. So anybody who hunts deer knows that venison's a very lean meat. Having a source of fat in their diet could have provided enough of a surplus so that brains could get bigger back in, in our human evolution. Yeah. What do you call this? It's cricket sourdough. It's bread, it's bread, it's bread. It's bread. It's bread. No, okay. Got, oh, okay. This loaf was about 10% ground up crickets into this, replaced from the flour. Oh, that smells amazing. The other one is um, one cricket smell. salt with chili powder and honey. That's one I can smell, I need to try that. Oh, that's amazing. I want to eat this every morning, ants and all. The ants with the herbs and the butter, mm. again, that formic acid zip, the zing, the zest. Yeah, I see ants what ant eaters are raving about. Well, I always think about with bears. So bears have like giant claws and giant teeth, but what they do is they go dig for like termites and ants. <laughs> like they can kill anything, but they go after bugs. Barks, no bite. Yeah. Actually, they bite very hard. Yeah. Don't play with bears. Yeah, this is, this is definitely dish, high please. end bug gourmet. Next <laughs> dish, please. Ooh, bug pie. We have a mushroom, chickpea, pecan, and herb cricket tart. Why don't, why don't you give me a, one just of the sliver? smaller slices? You just want a sliver? Not for the bug reason, just like I'm Because we're all very full. <laughs> yes, I'm full of a lot of bug bread, and legs, and wings, and compound eyes. Mm. Mm. Do you think this could go the way of like sushi? I mean, you just imagine what sushi must have been like a couple of generations ago when it was so weird, like, oh my God, raw fish. And now you can like buy it in the gas station. Everywhere. For dishes like this, you really don't realize bugs are in it. And that's the point. The only real way we're gonna get people in mass to take up this kind of diet choice is if it is as close to normal as possible. But here we're getting all the same nutrients. It's delicious. Crickets are far less smart than pigs. Um, and so you can just feel a lot better about eating it. A lot of people will talk about sustainability as well. Bugs are so good on a variety of envirometrics. You know, they take less space than traditional livestock, great for indoor vertical farming, think future food like space travel. Uh, they can reduce our reliance on antibiotics and livestock rearing. They also are wonderful for biodiversity and for regenerative soil health. Uh, but the two main ones that we always hit on are emissions and water use. The same amount of crickets, the same amount of beef, it takes a thousand or so times less water to make the crickets as the beef. Yeah. Okay, but emissions are a huge part of that too. We know that agricultural emissions are like a big part of our greenhouse gas problem. You can trace emissions to a lot of different things from food transport and insects are great for local agriculture. And they have a very effective feed to body mass conversion ratio too. So all that feed that you're giving the cows and the pigs and everything else, a lot of it's wasted. Some of it in terms of like body heat since they're warm blooded, mm -hmm. but insects are cold blooded. So you have just extremely efficient little systems here turning input to output that's very nutritious. Environmental reasons aren't the only thing people think about when they're like, what am I gonna eat? Are there other reasons to eat bugs that are not just purely about climate change? A lot of people are making their dietary choices based on impact on the animals we've been eating. We don't treat them very well. Some vegetarians actually really think that insects are a great alternative because crickets like dark cramp spaces. Like to put them in a bin and raise them, like it's not nearly the kind of shock to their system than what we're doing to the mammals. So from an animal welfare standpoint, eating insects is much more appealing option for a lot of people than eating mammals. Delicious, nutritious, environmentally sustainable -licious. Is that a word? I think now it is. It's a word. Final thoughts, what do you think? This is definitely my best experience with this kind of dish I've ever had. My previous experiences have just been like, hey, try this novelty. When you're actually using it intelligently, um, I think it's it could be as good as anything else. I, I, I'm still eating it. As someone who really never ate bugs in almost any form that I knew about <laughs> before tonight. I am blown away. The, the way that these were worked in, it, it's both so artful and just so natural. Like, it, bug eating is not weird. It's totally awesome. I've had a lot of bug banquets, but this was superb. Guys, thanks for coming to this awesome Thanksgiving dinner with me. I'm thankful for crickets, mealworms, and all the rest. It turns out eating insects isn't that weird for humans after all. We've been doing it for a long time. And you know, like most things that you eat, you don't know if you're gonna like it until you try it. And as for me, well, I'm a bug eater now. These chips are made from crickets. Stay, Stay curious. curious.
And just one more thing, I wanna send a huge thank you to my friend Kyle Hill from the channel Because Science for joining me at dinner. He makes great stuff, definitely go check it out. And my friend Emily Grassley from The Brain Scoop also has a really cool video about entomophagy, eating insects over on her channel. Links to all of that down in the description. As always, thank you to our patrons for making videos like this possible. As far as I'm concerned, you're guests at our family dinner table every day. We have great perks over on our Patreon page. Definitely go check them out. And you can even join the ranks of these Galaxy Brain patrons. And pass the cricket. Geese. No, I have all the cricket butter to myself. Yeah, where's that butter? Don't... Yeah, yeah, more cricket butter. Give oh, me the cricket, you have to share. No, pass the cricket butter, Kyle. No, you have to come visit me yeah, more often if you want things left? for me. One of those tarts. Yeah, I want those pecan pies. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Um, Thanks. Um,